starts right now. Making headlines this morning now that Joe Biden is president, impeachment talks continue regarding former President Donald Trump, why some lawmakers want to delay the proceedings. Outside with live cam, didn't really see any fog on the way into work this morning, but uh, I assume that it's still possible. 53 degrees out there as we take a look back towards downtown with that camera. Hi, good morning, happy Friday. It is January 22nd. We made it to Friday, everybody. And right now we do have some rain that appears to be showing up on radar with Mike Oster. Hey, good morning. Good morning, yeah, a couple of, uh, first of all, it's very mild out there this morning. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of clouds, couple of clouds, couple of patches of fog, pardon me, and yeah, a couple of spots of some rain. So that's just gonna be in the morning. And then later on this afternoon, we're still looking at uh, kind of a spring-like day and plenty of sunshine. So nothing going on in this picture. Of course, this is the one we were showing yesterday that was uh, just socked in with all the fog. Uh, however, However, the rain is kind of heading on in here. It is just now working into extreme southwestern Bear County, crossing uh, right uh, around Pearsall and 90. You may run into a couple of those showers as well around Sabinal, Hondo, as this continues to work its way off to the uh, kind of east north eastwardly. And it is going to be working its way across town in just the, the next few minutes, basically. And then a couple of those showers are still sliding across 35 and may graze. There's, as you can see, grazing Canyon Lake and uh, northern fringes of San Marcos and those will continue to move on out. So this is kind of a leftover little glitch in the atmosphere, if you will. All right, as far as fog, some is showing up in Kerrville, a little bit Stinson, a little bit in Pleasanton, but as is always the case, it's going to get thicker and kind of off and on throughout the morning and especially as we approach uh, sunrise and then down around Beeville is the thickest fog. Also, Rock Springs has uh, plenty of it, so we'll have to watch out for that this morning. But like I said, things are going to be clearing out quite nicely in temperatures. We are about 10 degrees above normal right now, averaging low 50s and mold did go up yesterday. Mountain Cedar is on the, the low side. Throughout the morning, temperatures are going to be steady and will stay right around the low 50s. Again, fog, couple of showers this morning, so it's going to make the roads damp, slow down your commute, and then 76 and sunshine. A little taste of spring. Like I said, will this last into the weekend? Details coming up in a couple of minutes. And traffic authority, Samuel King, anything going on, sir? Uh, good morning, Mike. We still have an incident that happened overnight. This is a 1604 and 37. This is a, was a fatal uh, collision there involving an 18 wheeler who was actually carrying molasses. Uh, so that means that cleanup has had to continue throughout the night, but hopefully in the next couple of hours or so, this will be completely cleared up. But you can see a little bit of yellow remaining there uh, at that interchange. So that's something to watch out for. I also have uh, this accident on Wurzbach Parkway at North uh, Wiedner Road. Uh, that's slowing traffic, especially on Wurzbach Parkway. So that's something to watch out if you are traveling early this morning. And here's a look at Transguide 1604 at Calabra. That looks uh, fine this morning. And guys, over to you. Thank you very much, Samuel. Well, President Joe Biden has been calling for unity in his first days in office. But with an impeachment trial of former President Trump around the corner, will the hope for bipartisanship last? CNN's Melissa Rainey has the latest. Federal prosecutors continue to charge dozens who allegedly participated in the Capitol riots. New evidence shows rioters attacked police officers with whatever they had, including flagpoles, a fire extinguisher, and fists during the violent insurrection on January 6th. This is a real threat. This was not a one-off. This was not a one-time thing unless we aggressively work to make it so. It's still unclear when former President Trump, who was impeached for incitement of insurrection, will have to defend himself before the Senate. I don't believe he provoked if you listen to what he said at the rally. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell proposing to delay the upcoming impeachment trial until February, giving Trump's legal team two weeks to prepare their case. Some Democrats open to the delay if Republicans work to confirm Biden's cabinet. We'd be more receptive to this delay if we are continuing to do the work of the Senate in confirming the senior members of the cabinet across all departments. The White House says it will lead the timing of the trial up to Senate leadership. Ensuring that it doesn't delay uh, uh, the Senate, Congress moving forward in uh, consideration uh, and discussion around uh, the COVID relief package that the president proposed last week. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. Turning to the coronavirus here at home, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says we can expect to see large amounts of cases for at least another three to four weeks. Another 2,500 new COVID-19 cases were listed in the latest report in Bear County. Our seven-day average is a little above the 2,000 mark. 17 new deaths were also reported. 
Hospital numbers are slowly going down. There are still more than 1,400 COVID-19 patients being treated. 426 are in the intensive care unit and 255 are on ventilators. Well, during the pandemic, the San Antonio Food Bank has been answering the call to help thousands upon thousands of families in and around the Alamo City. And the Food Bank CEO says it has been a challenging time, to say the least. When you see such heartache and hardship, um, you see our city struggling, um, you count your blessings. You realize how fortunate we all are. And to be in a position where we're actually able to help and be a part of the solution and then see so many others engaging in that work to be able to help a neighbor, you just get inspired. Later today on GMSA at 9, the president and CEO of the Food Bank, Eric Cooper, sits down with our Max Massey to talk about why he got involved in this important cause. And time now is 435 and 53 degrees for now. Still ahead, a first look at the lottery mystery unfolding in the state of Maryland as people try to find out who won that $731 million Powerball lottery ticket. Plus, things are getting back to normal following the inauguration as thousands of National Guard members head home from the nation's capital. And outside with live cam, the weekend almost here. We're just about there, folks, but you're glad you're with us. We're glad you are with us on this Friday morning. Mike's full forecast is coming up after this break. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 439. As many as 15,000 National Guard members are preparing to leave Washington, D.C. and head home now that the inauguration of President Joe Biden is over. Enforcement agencies say the inauguration went off with only a handful of minor arrests and incidents. The National Guard Bureau says that of the nearly 26,000 Guard troops deployed to D.C. for the event, just over 10,000 remain on duty. The Bureau says the Guard is helping states with coordination and the logistics so that troops can get home. Retired Army General Lloyd Austin has congressional approval for a waiver that would allow him to become defense secretary. The House and Senate have both passed the measure. The waiver isn't the same as confirmation itself. It just allows General Austin to sidestep a law that requires a seven year gap between active service and becoming defense secretary. Austin retired from the Army in 2016. If confirmed, the former general would be the first African American in the cabinet post. Congress gave such a waiver to James Mattis when former President Trump nominated him for the position. The postponed Tokyo Olympics are due to open in just six months. Local organizers and the International Olympic Committee say they open on July 23rd, but it's still unclear how this will happen with virus cases surging in Tokyo and all around the world. More details are expected early in the spring when the torch relay begins from northern Japan. It's still unclear if fans will be allowed in venues and increasingly doubtful that fans from abroad will be allowed to enter Japan. It is game day. The San Antonio Spurs will host the Dallas Mavericks tonight after coming off their worst game of the season against the Golden State Warriors earlier this week. During that game, Spurs only shot 12% from three-point range, hitting only four. Here's hoping they can turn things around tonight. Tip-off set for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. And the Spurs have released more Fiesta-themed apparel inspired by the Spurs Fiesta-themed warm-ups from the 90s. We have already seen their new uniforms, but now a second season of limited edition La Coutre Apparel line is now out. It's a 12-piece collection that will debut right at tip-off on tonight's game against the Mavs. At the same time, the Spurs will wear their Fiesta-themed uniforms for only the second time this season. That, that first shot in our video was almost like Avery Johnson was coming back. I know. It's kind of <laughs> cool to see a throwback. Back there. <laughs> it really is. 441, 53 degrees. And still ahead as the price of internet access and cable services continue to go up, what you can do to possibly lower your bill. And the latest on the search for the newest multi-millionaire in Maryland after someone there won that $731 million Powerball jackpot. And welcome back. It's 444. There's a big mystery in a small Maryland town this morning. Everyone wants to know who has the winning Powerball ticket worth $731 million. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, mystery in Maryland. It's crazy. Here in the very small town of Lonaconi, home to just around 1,200 people. Is one of the best towns in America. It's the $731 million question. Who won the Powerball jackpot? 
but the big winner may never be revealed. Maryland is one of just seven states where winners can remain anonymous. Well, so it's an intense lottery debate. You know, some people want us to name all the winners because it's public trust. It, it makes sense to, to know that somebody's being paid the money. In our case, anonymity is, is the rule of the day. We like to allow people the comfortability to select how they come in and claim their prize. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk to the owner and employees at this store who sold the winning ticket as the multi-million dollar mystery deepens. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, Lonaconi, Maryland. The plot thickens. 445 right now. Of course, buying a home comes with a lot of responsibilities. And sometimes unexpected surprises can cause extra stress. Angie Hicks, co-founder of Angie's List, says it's important to keep an emergency fund so you'll be ready for repairs. She also says keeping an emergency supply kit can help you be more prepared if you lose power. So in addition to financial aspects, planning ahead, making sure you've got that savings account going so that you're ready when something pops up or you want to make an improvement. Now, Hicks says you can also need to know where your main water shutoff is. It sounds simple, but it's a big deal. Hicks says water can be your home's worst enemy and could cost you a ton of money for repairs. Cost of watching cable TV or logging onto the web continues to go up. So on your ties, Marilyn Moritz looks at why, how much, and what you can do about it. Screen time is costing more. Unless you're in a promotional offer, if you subscribe to AT&T's DirecTV or UVerse, Spectrum Internet, or Comcast Xfinity Cable or Internet, you may be seeing higher bills. It's becoming an annual thing for companies to raise prices on TV and Internet service. They blame the increases on rising programming costs and faster broadband speeds. This week, AT&T increased prices on most DirecTV and UVerse packages, an extra $5 to $9 a month. The most basic stayed the same. Some Spectrum Internet customers just saw their bills jump $5 a month, and Comcast is boosting add-on fees as well. Broadcast TV fees are going up by as much as $4.50 a month, and there's a $2 bump to get regional sports networks. Several companies are also reinstating data caps. They were suspended early in the pandemic when so many of us worked and learned from home. So if you exceed your data, you could get hit with charges. There is a bright spot. A new law requires cable and satellite TV companies to disclose the monthly price of your bill, including everything, when you sign up. They're also banned from charging rental fees for equipment like your router that you provide yourself. So what can you do if you're frustrated by the price hikes? Well, first contact your provider and ask if there's a way to lower your bills. Next, consider cutting the cord. Streaming may save you money, but of course you still need the internet. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 448. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. It's early, but how are things looking on this Friday? Well, we still have uh, this uh, incident here in South Bear County. This is 1604 and 37. Uh, this is where there's an 18 wheeler got into a collision with a van. It's a long story, actually. And that uh, 18 wheeler actually was carrying molasses um, and ended up being a fatal crash. Our Stephen Cavazos will have more on that coming up here on GMSA. But you can see, still see it's affecting traffic if you are in that direction, mostly there on 1604. Uh, still have uh, this reported incident here on uh, Wurzbach Parkway and Wheatner Road, but it looks like it's cleared just judging by the traffic flow. It's now at 40 some odd miles per hour, so that's good. Uh, some construction wrapping up on 410 and uh, 151, but the travel times look good there. Uh, nine minutes between 1604 and 90. And here's a look at Transguide 37 at Jones, 281 at the quarry, looking fine, guys. Thank you, Samu. We now recognize the gentleman from Michigan. Yeah, uh, yesterday I was reading, and I don't know if you saw some of the, uh, the, the memes and posts about it, but <laughs> la we all experienced kind of a phenomenon last night at 921. It was 21 minutes after the 21st 20, hour of the 21st day, 21st year, 21st century. Wow. I'm sure wow. there was a wedding somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I need to I think about it and realize it beforehand. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, cool. Uh -huh. I, I did hear about that. Yes. It's, it kind of hurts my brain a little bit. 
uh, that's okay. Mike, we've had such a mild winter. It's been, it's been easy to go outside and appreciate sunrises and sunsets. Yeah, and we finally had a little bit of sunshine yesterday. Uh, as expected, some of it, you know, tried to squeeze through and that nice little orange color and some of those clouds. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Uh, beggars can't be choosers, but if you can turn your camera sideways, we'd appreciate that. But uh, a great picture. All right. No visibility problems in this view, um, but get ready as far as maybe a little bit of fog. We do have some showing up uh, out there in Kerrville, hint of it in Stinson, as well as uh, down around Pleasanton. Rock Springs has some and then down to the southeast. And then on top of that, we do also have, and I want to pop up very quickly, my apologies. I wanted to put the radar on here really quickly and show you that we do have some rain that is showing up. Radar is coming up here. Here. Oh, let me click this button and I'm just going to start my computer over here. My apologies. It is a Friday and let's just jump right into right here and you can see right there on radar we do have some of these uh, showers even a couple of moderate showers that are working their way into uh, southeastern Bear County as of right now. And everything is moving basically in an eastward direction, maybe a little bit northeastwardly. So just be ready for that. Road's going to be damp this morning. It's not going to be a big rain event. It's not going to last all that long, but we will uh, see just enough of it to kind of slow down the morning commute and hopefully not add to uh, any more of Sam's workload this morning reporting on accidents, but just take it easy this morning. Now, here's the uh, computer model going in throughout the rest of today. Once we get rid of some of this patchy fog, as well as some of the showers, things are going to be clearing out quite nicely. It's going to be a beautiful day. We're going to have plenty of sunshine out there and temperatures get up in the mid 70s, about anywhere from 10, 15 degrees above normal, normal. Good looking evening tonight. Then the clouds are going to come back in here fairly quickly overnight. So don't even think we're going to see much sunshine starting off the day tomorrow and then throughout the day we will have a chance. We'll probably have some fog around tomorrow and then as we get into the afternoon hour, some of those showers are going to start to develop. Um, most of it is going to wait until later in the afternoon, maybe in toward dinner time tomorrow and then that rain will continue to work its way across the area and we'll have a lot more in the way of uh, some showers and a better chance showers and some thunderstorms later in the day on Sunday. 70 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. We'll be dealing with some of the fog mist and a couple of these showers this morning. And then again, things clear out nicely. Lots of sunshine. Again, a good taste of spring today. 75 weak little front moves through overnight, so knocks us down a few degrees still above normal tomorrow. Back to 75 Sunday. That's the better chance for some rain, uh, even a couple of stronger thunderstorms in the afternoon. Then we're going to be clearing out and finally getting back down to normal temperatures. Low 60s, low 40s by the uh, middle part of the week. But mild for the most part. Yeah, mild for the next few days. Very, very mild. Very mild weekend. Thank you, Mike. 452, 53 degrees. And still ahead, a popular TV series is getting a second season. Plus, a major music event has once again been canceled. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, one, two, zero, fireball eight. Daily four numbers, five, zero, six, eight, fireball nine. Cash five, seven, 15, 22, 28, 32. Texas two step four six twelve thirty two bonus ball five. Five Till, several new shows debuting this weekend on streaming as well as on cable TV services. The latest one was happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. <laughs> Hello, everyone. The latest season of Grownish was shot before the global pandemic, but star Yara Shahidi told us the show's topics still speak to today's issues. I think what we saw of extreme youth engagement and extreme youth activism um, in the best of ways this summer, and the ways in which student movements and young people led social justice movements and continue to lead. Shahidi, a current student at Harvard University who also serves as an executive producer on the series, says her priority is to give everyone a voice. There is still a lot of dialogue about, well, how do we want to handle these topics? And uh, what does it look like to have a nuanced conversation about things that are just generally messy to talk about? You can watch the new season of Grownish this winter on Freeform. Um, you know, I'm sure we can figure something out if you give me like 15 minutes. 12? 10. Why'd I do that? For the second year in a row, Britain's massive Glastonbury Music Festival has been canceled. We could leave the Christmas lights up till January.
Last year's 50th anniversary event set to feature acts like Taylor Swift and Kendrick Lamar was also canceled. Organizers said in a statement they are sorry to let you all down. But we gon' be all right. Have you ever seen a computer? We had many of them in the village with the goats. The goats are pretty advanced to use computer. Okay, now you're being a jerk. The White Tiger premieres on Netflix today. Based on the best-selling novel, the comedic film starring Priyanka Chopra Jonas follows the rise of a poor villager as he becomes a successful entrepreneur in modern-day India. And happy birthday to Journey frontman Steve Perry. He turns 72 today. Ooh, the wheel in the sky keeps on turning. And Diane Lane is 56. That's what's happening in Hollywood. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. God, Steve Perry, 72. I know. Huh. Well, I guess I'm Whew. still visualizing him, 80s Steve Perry. So I'm like, oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Steve, we're on the journey to aging with you. <laughs> good, good one. Best I can do. <laughs> Time now is 457 and 53 degrees for now. Still ahead, details on President Biden's new aggressive approach to contain the coronavirus pandemic. Plus, the White House website has a special message, an Easter egg, if you will, for those who know where to look. And it could lead to a job with the government. Details ahead in Tech Bites. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. President Joe Biden has announced an ambitious agenda for how to get the pandemic under control. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The details coming up. Outside with live cam, fairly mild start to our weekend. If you're thinking about getting a car wash today, that might be considered a short-term investment. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. <laughs> It'll last only for Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happy Friday. It is January 22nd. Thanks for joining us. Let's go straight to Mike for an update on the potential for some rain this weekend. Well, it's starting to work its way. We've got some rain out there right now. starting to work its way into town. We're going to share that in just a second. First of all, uh, 52 degrees out there at the airport and still plenty of humidity. So, <coughs> excuse me. You okay, I got choked up thinking about that. <laughs> I need to get my car washed. Anyway, uh, we do have a little bit of fog around the area this morning. It's going to be warm today, kind of spring like. And if you want a car wash to last for a couple of days, maybe this afternoon, but, but we do have some more rain moving into the picture by later on in the week and actually starting tomorrow evening. We'll have a few showers. The aquifer went up uh, one tenth of a foot and the allergens mold is on the high side. Mountain cedar is low and take a look at what the radar is showing as of right now. We do have some of these showers that are working their way in. It looks like uh, that one little batch obviously is just kind of skirting right across the uh, the southern half of Bear County right now. A uh, lot of even some moderate showers, southern Medina County around Pearsall, moving into northern Natascosa County. And this will all continue to work its way off to the uh, east. And as you can see, yeah, just some light showers here in and around downtown, most of it down there to the south. And this is just going to be kind of a, a one and done type situation, if you will. That's going to move on through and that disturbance will get on out of here. Now, visibility has dropped down considerably in Kerrville. Also starting to thicken up around uh, New Braunfels. Some of that fog is Rock Springs has dropped down. Beeville's at two and a half miles. So we'll be dealing with some of the fog throughout the next couple of hours. And with fog, there could be some of that mist as well. So morning fog, sunny, very warm today. Mid 70s for a high temperature, kind of spring like anywhere from Oh, on average, 10 to 15 degrees above normal, mild to warm tomorrow, mid 60s and then back up to the mid 70s on Sunday. A couple of showers later in the day tomorrow, then showers and a few storms on Sunday. And then next week we start kind of mild and slowly drop back down to normal temperatures as the week progresses. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and just like every other morning this week, just about you got trouble out there, right? Yeah, some trouble out there, but we'll start with some of the good news here. The travel times, if you're coming into uh, downtown San Antonio, look good. 26 minutes from New Braunfels right now. We'll keep an eye on that with the fog. 25 minutes from Bernie and then 29 minutes from the Pleasanton area on 37. And speaking of 37, we still have this situation down here. 37 and 1604. Uh, we had this 18 wheeler uh, crash overnight it was carrying molasses and this ended up being a fatal incident and our Stephen Cavazos is live at that scene this morning right now. And Stephen, how do things look at this hour out there? 
Hey, good morning, Samuel. Well, it's been almost six hours since that crash happened. And just take a look over here. We still have several crews that are out here working to clear up some of the debris of that fatal crash. And we've actually spotted a truck that's been hauling off pieces of an 18 wheeler that, as you said, Samuel, was carrying molasses before it launched off the highway and onto this access road. Now, that's where it hit a van before crashing into an embankment and then bursting into flames. Now, police say the driver of the 18 wheeler was burned beyond recognition. Now, two people were in the van, were actually rushed to a nearby hospital. We are told that their injuries are minor. Now, the cause of the crash is still not known, and the driver's identity has not been released. Now, we still have a very busy scene out here along the I-37 access road. This is going north into San Antonio. So if you're taking this route to go to work, you may be wise to just use some extra caution this morning, especially now that we have some rain coming down. Uh, we'll be out here coming up in the next few minutes of GMSA. Back to you. President Joe Biden has announced a national strategy for how to combat the coronavirus crisis. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is in Washington with the latest. In his first days in office, President Joe Biden is overhauling the national response to the coronavirus pandemic. 400,000 Americans have died. That's more than have died in all of World War II. 400,000. And this is a wartime undertaking. Biden signed 10 executive actions Thursday, including using the Defense Production Act to order private companies to manufacture supplies like syringes, requiring international travelers to the U.S. to receive a negative COVID test and a mask mandate at airports and for interstate travel. We're in a national emergency. And it's time we treat it like one. Key to Biden's strategy is more funding for vaccine distribution, part of his proposed $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. The price tag of the proposal could be a tough sell in Congress. But Biden's Treasury Secretary nominee Janet Yellen says now is the time to act. The smartest thing we can do is act big. In the long run, I believe the benefits will far outweigh the costs especially if we care about helping people who have been struggling for a very long time. Biden is set to address the economic crisis in remarks today as COVID cases continue to spike, forcing businesses to close and lay off workers. The latest weekly jobs data shows 900,000 Americans filed first-time claims for unemployment benefits last week, and more than 15 million people are currently collecting some form of jobless aid. And this afternoon, President Biden is expected to sign more executive orders responding to the economic crisis. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. When it comes to local COVID vaccinations, WOMED sites on the city's south and west side say they are not expecting a new shipment of vaccine until January 30th. A shipment expected to contain 9,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine. And to release, WOMED says the reservation hotline for both clinics will open next Saturday morning. Those who are eligible will be able to call the number on your screen starting January 30th. Vaccinations at both the Elvira Cisneros and Alicia Trevino Lopez centers will begin on Monday, February 1st. And time now is 507 and 53 degrees for now. Still ahead, can't figure out what to watch on Netflix. We'll tell you about a new feature that will help you decide. And also next, a new line of motorcyclist clothing that could save lives during a crash. Outside with live cam, rain still in the forecast for the weekend. But what about today? Let's focus on our Friday and the chance we could see some sunshine. That would be nice. You're watching GMSA. And welcome back. It's 511. In your morning consumer headlines, live performances are returning to Disney World, at least at one show. The park says the Festival of the Lion King show is scheduled to resume at its Animal Kingdom Park in Orlando. The show uses a cast of live actors, singers, and dancers. Disney says it will modify the performance to allow social distancing on the stage and backstage, as well as audience seating. Park officials have not said exactly when the show will start again, only saying it will be sometime over the summer. When Disney reopened its Florida parks in July, it did so without any live performances. Meanwhile, in California, Sister Park Disneyland does remain closed without an estimated reopening date. If you know any bikers, you already know they don't wear leather just to look good. It's also meant for protection. And now motorcycle safety may be about to take a leap forward with a new article of clothing. Meet airbag jeans. These pants have concealed airbags inside the legs. Riders tether them to their bikes, and if they fall, the airbags are triggered and filled with compressed air. 
Unlike the airbags in cars, these can be deflated and used again multiple times. The inventor of the airbag jeans hopes to bring them to market next year. The idea really isn't that new. Wearable airbag vests to protect the upper body have been around for more than 20 years. Motorcyclists in the U.S. are about 28 times more likely than car occupants to die in a crash. And American Airlines getting into the wine delivery business. The company rolled out a new program called American Airlines Flagship Sellers. The monthly subscription starts at $99. You get three bottles of wine with that option. American Airlines is also offering single bottles, which range in price from about $13 to $40. Airlines still are not offering the amount of flights that they did pre-pandemic. Alcohol is banned in many cabins to help thwart the spread of COVID-19. That means there's a lot of leftover booze that American Airlines is looking to cash in on. Well, that's one way to do it. Yeah, I guess they're thinking ahead. 513, 53 degrees. And still ahead, more bad news for the popular social media app, Parlor. More details on a new feature that helps you decide what to watch on Netflix. I'm Erin. And I'm Margo. We've always done things our own way, charted our own paths. I wasn't going to just back down from moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis wasn't going to change who I am. When I learned that my joint pain could mean permanent joint damage, I asked about Embril. Embril helps relieve joint pain and helps stop permanent joint damage. Plus, Embril helps skin get clearer in psoriatic arthritis. Ask your doctor about Embril so you can get back to your true self. Embril may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events, including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. Tell your doctor if you've been someplace where fungal infections are common, or if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if you have persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Don't start Embril if you have an infection like the flu. Visit Embril.com to see how your joint damage could progress. Embril, eligible patients may pay as little as $5 per month. 516 on your Friday morning. Welcome back. Another setback for Parler. A judge has blocked the social media app from being restored. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a federal judge has ruled that Amazon does not have to reinstate Parler. The social media site was popular among followers of former President Trump. It was kicked off Amazon's web hosting service for allowing incendiary speech and other content seen as inciting violence. Netflix is launching a new feature providing suggestions when you can't decide what to watch. The shuffle play option will display titles based on what you've watched recently. If you don't like what's offered, another button appears saying, play something else. And the Biden administration has hidden a message on the White House website. It's in the coding of the site, and it says, if you're reading this, we need your help building back better. It ends with a link to an office that aims to improve digital communications. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day and an even better weekend. If you have to hit the road, there are some things to keep in mind. Yeah, Samuel, let's go ahead and check in with those problems we were seeing earlier. Hey, good morning, uh, Stephanie and Mark. And we have a, a new stalled vehicle that's out, out here on 1604 and 151, but not impacting traffic at the moment. But one thing that might be affecting traffic, and we think it is, is this situation at 1604 and 37 that's been going on for several hours. Uh, that's the uh, fatal collision, and that was involving an 18-wheeler that was carrying molasses. So that's accounted for how long the scene has been out there because they have to clean up uh, that situation. And take a look at some uh, travel times between 181 and 281 in South Bear County. 15 minutes now uh, going westbound, 14 minutes going eastbound. So those delays are improving uh, just a little bit. Here's a look at Transguide 37 at 35. Uh, downtown had some issues there yesterday, but that looks fine as does 37 in Jones. Before I let you go, so gas prices update uh, 199 in Bear County. So that's a bit of an improvement, but it still goes continues to go up nationally and uh, in Texas uh, as crude oil prices increase. So that's something to watch out for if you're traveling around this weekend, guys. Good info. Thank you very much, Samuel. Yeah, thank you, Samuel. A uh, beautiful moon back there. Yes, uh, this one, as the caption says, it was kind of uh, moon peaked out in between the clouds passing by last night. Tonight's going to be a beautiful night for uh, doing a little moon gazing. Uh, do it tonight because tomorrow night, no, same thing with uh, with Sunday. We've got a pretty good view out there. Uh, 10 at 410. No problems right now. However, rain is starting to move on into the area and um, light to even some moderate showers. So here's where that camera is looking down this direction. So it's not picking up any rain there yet, but obviously on the south side, we've got uh, 
well, Von Orme over toward Elmendorf. Some uh, couple of moderate showers there, some light rain in and around town, and that will continue to work its way across the area. So we'll uh, continue to have this around for probably about the next hour or a couple of hours. And then on top of that, we do have some fog in places. Not bad in and around town, a little bit around Stinson. New Braunfels has dropped down to just three quarters of a mile, half mile at Kerrville, more off to the uh, south and east, and then Rock Springs is, is just pea soup as of right now. Zero visibility in Rock Springs. We'll be dealing with this throughout the rest of the morning. Then it's going to be a complete flip flop. We're going to have just beautiful sunshine and very, very warm temperatures. Warm right now, and it's going to really warm up later on this afternoon. Yesterday we did hit 63, normal high temperature. Big difference today, add anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees to that. We're going to be looking at a lot of uh, mid and upper 70s, even some low 80s around the area for high temperatures later on today. So very much spring like way above normal by a good 10 to 15 degrees. So we've got uh, some of the clouds and rain around this morning. We clear out nicely throughout the afternoon and overnight. Then clouds are going to move in pretty quickly tomorrow morning. We're probably going to be dealing with some fog again tomorrow morning. And then as the afternoon rolls on, we'll start to see uh, a couple of showers trying to develop around the area and more so will continue to move in then overnight into Sunday and throughout the day on Sunday. We'll have actually a couple of uh, maybe even a few stronger thunderstorms or at least the potential of that later in the day on Sunday. It's going to be kind of very unstable atmosphere. Then we get another sort of weak front moving on through here and that's actually going to start to clear us out and temperatures overall a mild weekend will be down a little bit tomorrow, but uh, temperatures then next week will start to make a slow decline back down to normal readings. So today already well above normal at noon, 70, mostly sunny skies, but of course got to deal with some of the uh, the showers, a little bit of fog around this morning, and then sunshine later on this afternoon, high temperature 76 degrees, and normal highs in the uh, low 60s. Nice night tonight, and then tomorrow we start off at 50, up to 67, still above normal, then back up to 75 on Sunday, but the rain moves in late in the day tomorrow, and uh, showers, thunderstorms on Sunday. And then temperatures, like I said, make that slow decline back down to normal by the middle part of next week. You know, I know we've been doing this social distancing thing now for about a year. I miss the days of being able to kind of gather here yeah. as a family at the desk and catch up and chat. It's just, uh, it is what it is. But every day, I think we're a step closer to me <laughs> getting back there. That would, yes. yeah, that would be nice. Yep. Good to see you, Mike. Thank you very much. Right now, 521, 53 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Jessica Chastain set to play the role of a well-known evangelist and TV personality. Plus, the Indie Spirit Awards are going primetime. We've got your lottery numbers. Don't forget Mega tonight. Uh, it's it's only like $970 million. That's just some change. That's, you know. that's it. Yep. We may have the decimal <laughs> in the wrong place. Uh, pick three numbers, 120, Fireball 8. Your daily four numbers, 5068, Fireball 9. Cash 5 at 7, 15, 22, 28, 32. And your Texas 2 step, 4, 6, 12, 32. Bonus ball 5. Five twenty five, the Indie Spirit Awards are going primetime. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in your Hollywood Minute. Get ready for Jessica Chastain as Tammy Faye Baker. The two-time Oscar winner is set to star in The Eyes of Tammy Faye as the singing televangelist with the memorable eyelashes. Andrew Garfield co-stars as Jim Baker. The film is due in theaters September 24th. The pandemic has prompted changes in every other award show. Why not the Film Independent Spirit Awards? The ceremony honoring the best indie movies traditionally takes place the Saturday afternoon before Oscars Sunday. This year, the indie spirits will take place the Thursday before the Oscars, April 22nd, as a prime time special on IFC. Music has been called the universal language. That's the premise of The Sound of Us, a new documentary exploring how music helps us to hope, to grieve, to be honest, and to find courage. The doc, loaded with interviews and performances, debuts Friday as part of NAM Believe in Music Week. Viewers can register at attend.believeinmusic.tv. Keeping the beat in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
Now it's 526, still 53 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the probe into the siege on the U.S. Capitol getting deeper, and it may include two Republican senators. Plus, why doctors are becoming concerned about some COVID-19 patients, uh, sometimes referred to as long haulers. And we have some important suggestions you need to know about before making repairs around your home. And a good morning to you. Hope you slept well. Had a good overnight shift. It is Friday, the 22nd of January. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. And this Friday, we're going to see some sun, right, Mike? Oh, yeah, we'll see plenty of sunshine. Uh, there was a little, you know, a peak or two yesterday, but this afternoon, plenty of it. Now, this morning's different situation. This view is good, but it doesn't uh, tell hardly any of the story. First of all, uh, temperature right now is at 52. We've been holding fairly steady. Not much of a breeze out there. Very high uh, humidity, dew points, and the temperature are running neck and neck, and that's why we're seeing some fog in the area. Also, we've got a little disturbance moving across here, and that is uh, bringing a little bit of rain. We've got some of these showers, a couple of light moderate showers that are sliding across the area. And as you can see, covering a good chunk of especially the kind of southern two thirds of town. More moving in on the northwest side there. Again, a lot of it's on the, the light side, the green, but got some moderate rain down there on the uh, south side. So obviously roads are going to be damp. And then, like I said, on top of that, we do have some fog to deal with in places. New Braunfels actually improved slightly in the past couple of minutes, up to a mile and three quarters. A lot of thick fog. Kerrville head on out to Rock Springs, and it is just pea soup fog out there and more down along the uh, the coastal plain. So the rain will move across the area, and then we will still have some of that fog sticking around at least throughout the next couple of hours up until around sunrise or just after that. Then we start to clear on out. And then as uh, like Stephanie was asking about, we do have plenty of sunshine in the forecast 70 at noon 76 for a high temperature later on today. Very spring like tomorrow will be down a little bit as far as temperatures, but then the clouds start to move on in here and more rain chances later on this weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and I think every morning this week we've had accidents early in the morning. Yes, uh, we have uh, all five days so far. Here's a look at Transguide right now. Mike, you're mentioning some of the uh, rain in the area and that should uh, start to pick up. But travel times uh, looking OK so far. 26 minutes coming in from New Braunfels, 25 minutes and I 10 from Bernie. 28 minutes on 37 right now from Pleasanton and we still have uh, the situation there at 1604 and 37 uh, where overnight there is an 18 wheeler that got into a collision ended up being a fatal collision and that 18 wheeler was carrying molasses so that cleanup has been quite extensive and of course now uh, we saw that it's raining out there. Stephen Cavazos is live at that scene and, and Stephen how is that cleanup going this morning? Well, Samuel, the only way to describe that cleanup is ongoing. You can take a look right behind me as we last showed you that they, we still have several crews out here hours after that crash has happened. Now we are still waiting to get a lot more information, but what we know right now is that Tanya Tony police say this all happened just before 10 last night. Now they say that 18 wheeler was hauling molasses before it launched off the highway and onto the access road. Now that's where it hit a van before crashing into an embankment and then bursting into flames. Now, police say the driver of the 18 wheeler was burned beyond recognition. Now, two people were in the van who were in a van were rushed to a nearby hospital and we're told that their injuries are minor. Now, again, the cause of the crash is still not known and the driver's identity has not been been released, but we still see crews out here along I 37 access road going into San Antonio working to clear up that scene. It's still not clear how long they will be out here. But if you drive through this area, it would be rise to use caution this morning. Back to you. Thank you, Stephen. More than two weeks have passed since the attack on the U.S. Capitol. Dozens of those involved are facing charges, but federal authorities are still hunting for other suspects. CNN's John Lawrence reports. The probe into the deadly insurrection at the U.S. Capitol is escalating. The threat of right wing uh, extremism is here, right? And we saw it on January 6th. Um, and it will continue to be a persistent and real threat to the District of Columbia. About 120 suspects have been arrested, including Michael Foy of Michigan, who prosecutors allege is seen in this video striking police officers with a hockey stick during the riot. Anybody involved in that should be prosecuted. I've been very, very clear about that 
from day one. Joseph Biggs of Florida and a member of the Proud Boys extremist group is also facing federal charges. Additionally, officials state that images indicate Biggs carried a walkie-talkie device, possibly to communicate with others during the siege. Definitely there was a, a element that came prepared and was looking to do nefarious things. Seven Democratic senators have filed an ethics complaint against Republican senators Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley to see if their actions played any role in the attack or violated ethics rules. If people did aid and abet, there will be more than just uh, comments from their colleagues here. There'll be prosecution. Cruz and Hawley have blasted the complaint as political. And now the director of the U.S. Army staff is admitting he may have expressed some concern about the optics of sending more troops to the Capitol when D.C. government and U.S. Capitol Police were asking for them. I'm John Lawrence reporting. FBI Deputy Director David Bowditch is retiring. He has served in that role since March of 2018. And during that tenure, supervised the FBI operations while special counsel Robert Mueller was investigating former President Donald Trump's campaign. Mueller was looking at allegations Russia interfered in the 2016 presidential election. Trump frequently criticized the FBI publicly during that time. It's not known when Bowditch's retirement becomes effective. When it does, an associate deputy director will take over. Johnson & Johnson is planning to have enough COVID-19 vaccines for 100 million Americans by April. A board member says that's the plan if the clinical trial works out. Right now, Johnson & Johnson is conducting a large-scale trial to make sure the vaccine is safe and effective. Dr. Anthony Fauci says the company is close to seeking an emergency use authorization from the Food and Drug Administration. Unlike the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that are already available, Johnson & Johnson's vaccine is a single shot and does not need to be stored in temperatures in Houston police arrest a man they say went for fast food in a stolen ambulance authorities report the theft happened last night according to investigators paramedics were working at an apartment complex in the Houston area when the man jumped into the ambulance and drove off officials used GPS to track the ambulance to a jack-in-the-box drive-through there they found the man ordering food inside the emergency vehicle even had the emergency lights on Needless to say, the man was arrested. There's no word on what charges he will face. Back here at home, we see the San Antonio Food Bank in operation, helping thousands of families in our community. And we often hear from the CEO and the president of the food bank, Eric Cooper. Coming up at GMSA at 9, Max Massey sits down with Mr. Cooper to talk about what the food bank has been like during this pandemic and what his journey has been like to get there. Having five kids myself and some of the greatest joys is just Saturday morning breakfast and making that meal for my kids and realizing that there's a dad out there who can't do that, who doesn't have the refrigerator of groceries that can do a simple meal. And Eric Cooper will talk about how he found his father living in the streets of Oregon and how that motivated him to help others. You can see the full story later this morning on GMSA at 9 and on KSET.com. But right now you are watching the early edition of GMSA. It's 537, 54 degrees. And still ahead, memes of Bernie Sanders dominating social media. We're going to take a look at some of the best ones so far. Yep, inauguration mittens everywhere. <laughs> and up next, why doctors are keeping a closer eye on COVID patients whose symptoms are lasting longer than usual. And taking a look outside with live cam rain in some areas, but we are going to see sun today. We're going to check in with Mike later in the newscast. 540 now, a growing number of Americans have come down with COVID and are still cr have crippling symptoms months later. They're being called the COVID long haulers. Here's ABC's Janae Norman with more. The crippling health impacts and debilitating side effects thousands of Americans are battling months after recovering from COVID. You know, I was panicked. There was times where I felt like I was going to die. They're called long haulers, people who experience persistent symptoms long after having COVID, including fatigue, depression, joint pain, and even heart problems. Gabriel Aguilar, a 28-year-old Connecticut soccer coach, is one of them. He caught a mild case of COVID in March. By June, he says far worse symptoms hit, making it tough to even get out of bed. Dizziness. I just had pure dizziness for about six to seven months. So every day? Every day.
In Chicago, 60-year-old Mahmoud Ajamia said before getting COVID, he was healthy, going on long-distance bike rides and running half marathons. But for months afterward, he's undergone rehab to regain basic skills. This is really one of the most difficult experiences I had in my life. More than 24 and a half million Americans have tested positive for COVID-19, approximately one in every 13 Americans. And a UK study estimates that 10% of them suffered from long-term symptoms. Experts are now warning a new health crisis may emerge as this group grows. These are very, very severe health impacts that are keeping people from working, keeping people from living their normal lives. And the most difficult part for a lot of patients is that, you know, there just aren't many answers. This is going to be a big issue, but new post COVID care facilities are popping up around the country. Here in Connecticut, the COVID recovery center where Gabriel is being treated says that they've had more than 500 appointments since opening back in October. Anyone interested in treatment in one of those facilities should contact their insurance providers regarding coverage. Janae Norman, ABC News, Stanford, Connecticut. And time now, it's 542 and 54 degrees for now. Up next, before you start your next home improvement project, we have some suggestions from the pros when it comes to making repairs. 544 Home and Maintenance and Improvements are a normal process in the home buying experience. Angie Hicks, co-founder of Angie's List, says there are some tips to keep in mind if you're wanting to do some repairs around your home. First, Hicks says because of the pandemic, we're all using our homes more than before. You may find more needs for maintenance than in previous years. Secondly, Hicks says because of this change in lifestyle, people are looking for more creative ways to make their homes fit their new everyday needs. People are thinking about how can we make our house, houses really fit our new lifestyle. So if we're doing much, we're working from home more, if our kids are at home more, you know, how do we make that house more conducive for all of us to live in harmony? Hicks says if you're looking for extra space to work out or work, turn your spare bedroom into a home gym or office is a great place to start. Now, based on remodeling trends, more people are also improving their outdoor spaces by adding pools or outdoor kitchens. Well, the style and fashion of Inauguration Day was all the rage from Michelle Obama's pantsuit to First Lady Dr. Jill Biden's sparkly blue coat. But it was a pair of mittens worn by Senator Bernie Sanders that left everyone smitten. <laughs> CNN's Jeannie Mose reports. <laughs> People gushed about Michelle Obama's outfit. Can I just remark of how flawless Michelle Obama is? Some even gushed about the $2,000 sneakers worn by an in-law, Vice President Kamala Harris's. Rocking some Dior Air Jordans. Amazing, amazing. But none of that gushing came close to the gusher of memes inspired by Bernie Sanders for what was dubbed his grumpy chic look. It was just something about the pose, the mittens, the social distance, one company is already rushing to turn Bernie into a bobblehead. His image is on a set of Birch coasters selling for $11.99 on Etsy. He's been transferred to Forrest Gump's bench behind the Resolute Desk, seated in the Game of Thrones throne, appropriately dressed for crossing the Delaware, or less heroically, an old man on his way to the post office, <laughs> as if he had an appointment at the DMV. Or was taking a break with the boys in that famous skyscraper construction photo. True, Bernie's mittens may be on the far fringe of fashion, but so what if he seemed dressed for riding the subway rather than attending the inauguration? Looking warm, tweeted Dion Warwick. People were smitten with the mittens made for him two years ago by a Vermont school teacher fan. I gave those mittens to Bernie as a gift, just um, expecting nothing in return. And I think it's beautiful that they've gone so far. They're made out of old wool sweaters with fleece from recycled plastic. Sadly, I have no more mittens for sale, Jen Ellis tweeted after a flood of requests. Maybe the look isn't everyone's cup of tea. Maybe he'll never be described as... Absolutely flawless. But Bernie saw no flaws in his inaugural look coming from Vermont. We know something about the cold, <laughs> and we're not so concerned about good fashion. We want to keep warm. Bernie isn't just warm. He's hot. <laughs> Capable of making pottery and love in mittens. Genie Motes, CNN. New York. <laughs> oh, 
That's good stuff. <laughs> Folks here in San Antonio appear to have also had some fun on social media with the image of Sanders and his mittens. He was photoshopped at the San Antonio Zoo along with several other places here at, including here at KSAT. You can check out the whole collection right now on KSAT.com. And we're actually going to revisit some of these and show you a few more. There's the Is one he, at KSAT. <laughs> what, was he out front yesterday? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think it was yesterday. That's coming up on GMSA at 9. We're going to take a look at all of those and in, in a little bit later. Yeah, there's a lot of funny ones. Uh, my favorite so far, I think, is the one with the, he's holding a chicken on the stick. Chicken on a stick, chicken on waiting stick. for fiesta. Waiting for fiesta yeah, to happen. In the middle of El Mercado. <laughs> for now, let's put Bernie over there with Samuel Chase, <laughs> right? Let's try it out. <laughs> yeah, if I had more advanced skills, I'd just put him right here. Yeah. You know? But uh, that coat will come in uh, handy here, you know, with the rain. It looks looks very warm, especially in those, we, those days we had, I guess, last week or a couple weeks ago, and it was that cold rain. Yeah. So, uh, definitely. Uh, things mostly looking okay on, on the roads, except uh, we have this uh, stalled vehicle there at 1604 and 151. Also still have the situation here at 37 and 1604. We've been telling you about this uh, uh, 18 wheeler uh fatal uh, crash there for for the driver it was carrying uh, molasses so you can just imagine that cleanup and also it's raining uh, too so that's something to keep in mind especially uh, for folks south of i-10 we have some construction to tell you about this weekend again here's 1604 travel times looking excuse me 281 uh, travel times looking okay right now but from tpc parkway to 1604 this weekend some intermittent lane closures also in uh, comal county on 35 there's going to be a southbound closure from watson's lane Old uh, Bastrop Road down to uh, Conrad's Lane. Bastrop, I'll get that right, folks. Don't want the Bastrop people calling us. Uh, Friday <laughs> at night, uh, tonight, and through Saturday morning, and also on Monday. So this is. This isn't all weekend. This is a Friday and Monday closure on 35 to watch out for. And here's Transky 35 at Cesar Chavez downtown and uh, 410 at Perrin Vital. Some uh, rain out there, so watch out for that and plan some extra time this morning if you're heading out. Thank you, Samuel. Yes, we will be careful. I think my favorite meme, though, is the one where they put him in the picture, the classic picture from World War II with uh, <laughs> the Yalta conference with <laughs> Stalin and Roosevelt and Churchill, and there's Barry Sanders next to you. So. <laughs> Who knows? He may have been there. We just that, the first time we've seen him <laughs> fit in. That's you know? true. Guys, but no I spring think, chicken. But I no. think the video from, uh, what was it, Ghost? Third, Ghost. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that, yeah, that I was pretty good. I hadn't seen that yeah. one. Mm -hmm. That's pretty funny. Yeah. All right, we had a lot of clouds sticking around yesterday. I do not like the descriptor, though, saying it looks like snakeskin, because now I'm just going to get the woolies every time I look up at the sky because I don't like snakes. Anyway, great picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect shot. And uh, nothing going on really in this view. Again, the interchange 410 and I-10 looking in toward downtown. But we do, and as Sam mentioned, we do have uh, some rain that is sliding on through the air. You can see the tail end of it is back out here uh, just into western uh, Frio, western uh, Medina County. So it's this little disturbance sliding on through here. But it, the timing of it is not great because it's going to make the roads very wet for the uh, the morning commute so obviously you're going to have to take it easy and even a couple of moderate showers sliding on through that uh, the yellow area plus we've got some fog now it has improved a little bit in new braunfels also kerrville has improved six miles stinson pretty good at the airport and going up 10. Rock Springs, though, it is just a pea soup and getting close to it down here along the, the coastal plains. We'll be dealing with the fog throughout the morning. And then by say, mid morning, we're going to start to see more sunshine, a lot of sunshine throughout the day and beautiful evening tonight. Cool off relatively quickly once the uh, the sun goes down tonight. Then the clouds are going to come back in fairly soon tomorrow. Uh, I was hoping that or thinking a couple of days ago that we might have seen some sunshine the first portion of the day, but it looks like that we'll see uh, just basically starting your day with clouds. And then by later on in the afternoon, showers are going to start to work their way in here into tomorrow night, extending over into Sunday and throughout the day on Sunday. And actually by Sunday afternoon, we may see a couple of uh, stronger storms that are going to try and develop. Then that's going to move on out of here once we get into uh, Monday and the first part of the week. So we've got higher humidity coming in here, destabilizes the atmosphere on Sunday, and then a front moves on through. It's not going to really be big blasts of cold air. It's just going to get rid of a lot of the uh, humidity for next week, which will then allow us to get back down finally to normal temperatures. It's going to be overall a mild weekend, starting with today, 70 at noon, 75 for a high temperature, plenty of sunshine, excuse me, 76, plenty of sunshine throughout the rest of today. 
once we get rid of the morning fog and some of that rain. And then tomorrow we start off 50, still above normal, but a little bit cooler, 67 degrees back up to the mid 70s on Sunday. And again, we'll have to keep an eye out for maybe a couple of stronger storms later on in the afternoon on Sunday. And then, like I said, slowly back down to normal readings by the uh, middle of the week. So next week's looking very nice, mild weekend, a little on the damp side. This weird winter continues. Yeah, but at least it's mild. We have a little break, you know, mm -hmm. from our heaters. Right. For a little bit. <laughs> February's around the corner. Yes, it is. Thank you, Mike. 553, 54 degrees. And let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers for pick three. We have one, two, zero, fireball eight. Daily four, five, zero, six, eight, fireball nine. Cash five numbers, seven, 15, 22, 28, 32. Texas two step, four, six, 12, 32. Bonus ball of five. Don't forget, Mega tonight is up to $970 million and change. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, a cold wave on the move should encompass a lot of the country. Below zero temperatures in some areas and a winter storm on the move that will go coast to coast. I will have the timing and track and who will get snow. It's all coming up plus much more on GMA. We'll see you soon. Coming up next Wednesday, we'll dedicate an hour to COVID-19 vaccines. We'll look at the science behind them, how they were developed so quickly, and what they mean for our future. The Vaccines Ending the COVID-19 Pandemic airs January 27th at 7 p.m. right here on KSAT 12, KSAT.com, and on the KSAT TV app. It's important for parents to know what is going on in their teenagers' lives. Just ahead, new research on families, communication, and strategies to keep an open dialogue. Let's check Trans Guide right now. We do have some rain in the area, and of course, we've got that major accident has been working all night long. We'll get an update on the situation out there and another look at your weekend forecast coming up right here on GMSA. Stick around, we'll be right back. A fiery crash ends with one driver's death and two others rushed to the hospital. We're live here on the scene as crews work to continue to clear up that scene. Police are searching for a suspect involved in a road rage incident that sent one person to the hospital with a gunshot wound. And taking a look outside with live cam rain in some areas, so you might want to pack a rain jacket or an umbrella just in case, but we will see sunshine today. We're going to check in with Mike right now. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you, TGIF. It is Friday, January 22nd. Happy Friday. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. And yeah, we're excited about Friday. We're excited about Friday and sunshine. Kind of a mixed bag of tricks in the weather department. And uh, Mike is here with more. We would want to see some sunshine, but we could also use a little bit more rain. Well, we do have more rain in the forecast. Uh, a decent shot by uh, later on in the weekend. But yeah, today, now we are dealing with a little bit of rain as of right now. In this view, uh, uh, we're not seeing anything yet, and this is kind of uh, a good example of what's going on in the northern half of uh, town. But this one batch of rain is working its way across the area. Uh, Frio County just kind of exiting Medina County, northern uh, Atascosa, obviously sliding into Wilson Gonzalez. You're going to be getting this, and it is uh, sliding uh, through almost all of of San Antonio proper now covering most all of uh, Loop 410 and even uh, getting up there on the uh, north side of town. So a couple of light moderate showers there just enough to sort of put a little bit of a damper on the, the morning commute. Visibility, we're dealing with some fog as well. Everything has really improved now, especially Kerrville and New Braunfels where you had a lot of very thick fog just about an hour or so ago, but that's not the situation in Rock Springs, still at zero visibility and a lot more down here to the southeast. So we'll still be dealing with some fog throughout the course of the next couple of hours. And temperatures this morning are going to be staying very steady. We're about 10 above normal, 52 degrees. And then as the morning rolls on, we are going to see more sunshine around here. Good looking day in store, 70 at noon, so already well above normal. And we top off about, well, anywhere from... 10, almost 15 degrees above normal, up to 76. Big question is, will that last through the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Every day this week, we've had accidents this morning. Traffic Authority and Samuel King 
still yeah. situation, right? Well, I wanted to show off the uh, the Transkai cameras here just to show uh, some of the rain on the roads as the traffic continues to build there, uh, Mike. And so uh, this morning, definitely uh, something you want to keep in mind, especially if you are here in the heart of San Antonio. Uh, looking at some travel times, 26 minutes in from New Braunfels, 29 minutes in from the Pleasanton area on 37. And you see uh, we have a stalled vehicle there, but we still have this crash that Mike was speaking about uh, here at 1604 at 37. You can see there still continues to be a delay. We understand that there was an 18 wheeler who was carrying molasses or to drive that the truck was carrying molasses uh, that spilled in this uh, major uh, crash overnight. And our Stephen Cavazos is live at that scene this morning. And Stephen, how does it look out there now? Hey, good morning, Samuel. Well, crews have been working through the night, and if you can see right behind me, we're actually starting to see just a little bit of traffic pulling, working up here this morning, but crews have not stopped. This all happened just before 10 last night, according to San Antonio police. Now, they say that 18-wheeler was carrying molasses before it launched off the highway and onto the access road here on 37, going north into San Antonio now. That's where it hit a van before crashing into an embankment and then bursting into flames. Now, police say the driver of the 18 wheeler was burned beyond recognition. Now, two people who were in the van were rushed to a nearby hospital, and we are told their injuries were minor. Now, the cause of the crash is still not known, and that driver's identity has not been released. But as we've been showing you throughout the morning, crews have been out here all night long working to still clear debris from that crash. In fact, earlier we did spot a truck that was hauling off some debris from that 18 wheeler. We will be out here coming up in the next half hour of GMSA as crews work to clear this scene. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say another man died overnight in a crash. Police say that happened around 1230 this morning at Loop 1604 and I-10 East. An officer says a man driving a pickup truck drove through a dirt field next to a gas station. They say the man was ejected from his truck and he died on the scene. Police are still working to determine what led up to the driver going through that dirt field. San Antonio police are looking for a suspect involved in a road rage shooting. They say this happened yesterday uh, about at 630 p.m. on MacArthur View near Wetmore. That's right next to San Antonio International Airport. And police say it started when a driver cut off another driver. Both pulled over, got out of their cars and started fighting. That's police say one of them pulled out a gun and shot the other man in the stomach. He was taken to Bampsey and is expected to survive. Meanwhile, police say the suspect drove off in a dark colored SUV. Complaints about illegal street racing has city staff looking for ways to strengthen laws to stop it. KSED has reported on several incidents, including one where fireworks caused injuries and another that led to a crash on Loop 410. In August, Police Chief William McManus instructed Fusion Center staff to monitor street racing. That has led to 77 arrests, 213 tickets, and 43 vehicle impoundments. Councilwoman Melissa Ca Cabello Havreta says possible solutions are in the works and says the problem cannot be arrested away. They are working on an ordinance aimed at targeting the spectators who encourage and share images of, of reckless drivers. Maybe we get really creative and, and find or build a track for individuals to partake in their sport safely without endangering the public. There's other public raceways in Texas that have been successful and safe. Members of local car clubs say these illegal racing meetups are giving real car clubs a bad name. City Council says they will be briefed on the racing problem in March. To the pandemic, local health officials reporting 2,507 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. They report that 17 more people have died from the virus. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the seven-day moving average is now 2,063 cases per day. More than 1,400 people are still in the hospital. 114 still needed medical care over the past 24 hours. WellMed says they expect the next shipment of COVID-19 vaccines on January 30th. Meanwhile, WellMed says the reservation hotline for the clinics on the south and west sides will open next Saturday morning. Those who are eligible will be able to call the number on your screen starting January 30th. Vaccinations administrations will then begin on Monday, February 1st. At this time, city officials say they do not know when the next shipment of vaccines will arrive at the Alamo Dome or the Wonderland of America's Mall. A plan to tear down and have a private company redevelop one of the oldest public housing developments in the nation is on hold. KSAT obtained a memo saying the pandemic caused 300 tenants into the Alizan Apache courts to fall behind on their rent. That makes them ineligible to 
lease renew, lease rather new redeveloped units under federal guidelines. District 5 Councilwoman Shirley Gonzalez says this is a devastating blow against redevelopment in the heart of San Antonio's historic west side. However, Kayla Miranda, a community organizer and tenant Alzan Apache, considers this change in plans a win. I think this is a victory for the community and what we have been doing over the past year fighting to save the Alizans. San Antonio Housing Authority says it will manage the property in order to allow tenants to keep federal protections. You can read more about this on KSAT.com. In your morning headline, Senator Ted Cruz of Texas could be the focus of a congressional ethics investigation. Seven Democratic senators have filed an ethics complaint against Senator Cruz and Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri. They are calling for the ethics committee to investigate the two Republicans for their actions leading up to the Capitol insurrection on January 6. Senators Hawley and Cruz objected to the Electoral College votes and the Democratic senators want to see if that contributed to inciting violence. They also want the committee to to investigate whether the two senators or members of their offices were in contact with organizers of the rally or if they knew about the plans for it or received funding from organizations or donors that also funded the rally. Senator Hawley called the complaint a quote flagrant abuse of the Senate ethics process end quote. Senator Cruz has not yet released a comment. President Joe Biden and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau have plans to discuss the Keystone XL pipeline after President Biden revoked its permit on his first day in office, the pipeline was to carry oil from Alberta, Canada to the Texas Gulf Coast. President Biden is saying revoking the pipeline's permit is consistent with his administration's economic and climate plans. Prime Minister Trudeau says he is disappointed in the decision, but understands the president's decision to fulfill his campaign promises. If the discussion happens as scheduled, it will be the president's first call with a foreign leader after taking the oath of office. Google is threatening to pull its search engine and other services out of Australia. The company says it's due to Australia's government planning to make tech giants pay for news content. The code of conduct proposed by the Australian government aims to make both Google and Facebook pay Australian media companies for news content they have previously posted on their sites for free. Google's director of Australia says the bill would be unworkable and a new code needs to be created. Meanwhile, Australia's prime minister says the government will not respond to Google's threats. 610, 54 degrees. If you are looking for a new job, it helps to know where to look. We will find out about a hidden Easter egg that can get you a job in the federal government. Game day for the Spurs. We've got a preview of tonight's game as well as some of the new throwback merchandise you can sport to, we can get rather, to support the Silver and Black as they prepare to take on the Dallas Mavericks. Love the throwback look and taking a look outside with live cam. Grab a rain jacket, it's raining in some of the areas around San Antonio, and be careful on the roadways. We're going to check in with Mike and Samuel later in the newscast. It is game day. The Spurs back home hosting their I-35 rival, the Dallas Mavericks. Tip-off set for 7.30 tonight over at the AT&T Center. You can watch the game on Fox Sports Southwest or tune into KSAT tonight to get game highlights. And the Spurs have released more Fiesta-themed apparel inspired by the team's warm-ups from the 90s. We have already seen their new uniforms, which is a first in Spurs history. But now a second season of limited edition La Cultura apparel line is now out. It's a 12-piece collection that will debut right at tip-off of tonight's game against the Mavericks. And at the same time, the Spurs will wear their Fiesta-themed uniforms for only the second time this season. You can read more about it on our website at kset.com. Good luck, guys, tonight against the Mavs. Yes, go Spurs, go. And let's go over to Samuel King and see how the roads are looking right now. Yeah, those Fiesta uniforms look pretty sharp, so yeah. nice to see them uh, bring them out again. Uh, we still have this situation here, 1604 and 37. Uh, as Stephen Cavazos was mentioned a little earlier, it seems like the traffic flow is improving. They're making some progress in cleaning up uh, that molasses spill from uh, the 18-wheeler that crashed overnight. Uh, we also have a stalled vehicle here at 35 in Zara. Zamora, so you can see a little bit of delays on, on 
military and uh, Zar Zamora. So let's take a closer look uh, at the travel times in this area. 10 minutes between 35 and 37, 10 minutes uh, in both directions, actually. Uh, so that's uh, looking OK. But again, watch out for that this morning. And also watch out uh, for some of the rain out and about 37 and uh, 35 looking good as this uh, 37 and Con Valley. But you can see uh, some of the wet uh, roadway there to wet pavement and finally a look at uh, the travel gas prices before I let you go here uh, 211 is the average price uh, across the uh, state and two dollars uh, in Bear County guys so something to watch out for if you are driving uh, once the rain clears this morning yeah the roads are soaked in some spots Mike yeah especially the uh, kind of southern half of uh, San Antonio Bear County but it's this one batch of rain that's moving across here and it's going to get out of here probably within the next uh, at least an hour a couple of hours we do have a little bit of fog on the tail of that nothing too awfully cold this morning as a matter of fact temperatures are about 10 degrees above normal we'll have fog shower and then later on this afternoon 76 for a high temperature anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal plenty of sunshine a very spring like day it won't last really into the weekend more on that coming up beautiful beautiful picture i love that shot and some of those high wispy clouds out there gorgeous sunset up there in camp wood thank you for the uh, ksat connect picture all right here's live cam from brook city base looking up toward downtown and obviously there's a little bit of rain on the lens and as far as temperatures everybody is in the uh, mid 50s right now uh, in and around the metropolitan area and pretty much all around our viewing area upper 40s uh, low 50s every Everybody's about 10 degrees above normal right now. So here's the batch of rain. It extends from about Pearsall um, up toward uh, Gonzales, New Braunfels. And as you can see, it's just kind of cutting right across town. So most all of the roads in and around town are wet or are going to be wet. Allow yourself some extra time this morning and visibility has actually improved quite a bit. Now we still have five miles of Pleasanton Kerrville, but that was down to about a half mile not too long ago in uh, Kerrville. New Braunfels has also improved, but we still have a lot of thick fog in Rock Springs and then down here to the uh, southeast. So that'll be something we have to deal with for the next few hours up through uh, just after uh, sunrise. Then we start to clear on out. Now some of those low clouds may be kind of stubborn in places, but we're going to clear out very nicely throughout the course of the morning and then later on this afternoon. Lots of sunshine around here. Clouds come in pretty quickly though tomorrow, so I don't think we see much in the way of sunshine. Maybe a little bit starting off in the morning, but then just mostly cloudy skies throughout the day. And by later on in the afternoon, then rain is going to start to work its way in here overnight and throughout the day on Sunday. And Sunday actually with the the way things are setting up, we could have some stronger thunderstorms later on in the afternoon on Sunday. So we are on the mild side, going to be up in the mid 70s. But then you look at what's going on up there in the northern United States right now nine below the actual air temperature at International Falls brutally cold air but all this is going to be working its way pretty much across the Great Lakes and staying up to the northeast so on the flip side of it we stay on the warm side not only throughout the weekend but well we'll finally make it back down to uh, normal readings by next week but no big blasts of Arctic air all that really really cold stuff is going to be staying way up there to the uh, north and to the northeast 70 today at noon mostly sunny skies and high temperature today 76 as I mentioned way above normal kind of spring like plenty of sunshine good looking evening tonight then tomorrow and yeah, lots of clouds 50 again in the morning so all of these numbers except on Thursday are above their respective normals we're back up to 75 again after a slight cool down the Tomorrow, back up to 75 Sunday, better chance of rain, probably about a 40% chance for some rain on Sunday, even a couple of potentially stronger thunderstorms. And then we clear out and again, finally back down to normal by the middle part of the week. Mike, if you can arrange some uh, mild rumbles of thunder, almost like a, like a, you know, white noise machine. For Sunday morning, that'd for be Sunday, great. It helped yeah. me sleep in yeah. Sunday afternoon. Sunday, oh, so okay. it'd be we nap take a nap. Time. Yes, <laughs> it'll yes. work. Take out. a nap before you go to bed for Monday. So. Okay, this is coming <laughs> together nicely. Right now, 619, 54 degrees. And there's a big mystery in a small Maryland town this morning. Everyone wants to know who has the winning Powerball ticket worth $731 million. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Would you like to try a breakfast sausage made with plants? Plants? It's delicious. 
And I'm a kid, so if I like it... Mm. Morning Star Farms, America's favorites made from plants. And trying Cogmito. The secret to amazing hair? Dove believes you get amazing results when you get the details right. That's why new Dove Hair Therapy Range has selected ingredients so potent they instantly nourish damaged hair at a cellular level. 100% smoother hair after first use. Why Walgreens? With co-pays as low as zero dollars, Walgreens makes affording your Medicare prescriptions no sweat. So you can get back to the thing you'd rather be doing. These fudge brownie M&Ms are really fudgy. Yes, they are. To put a fudge brownie center in an M&M's is... Genius. I know. I was going to say hard. Why won't you... Mm. Ah! Why won't you go in... Fudge brownie M&M's. In this morning's GMA First Look, mystery in Maryland. It's crazy. Here in the very small town of Lonaconi, home to just around 1,200 people. Is one of the best towns in America. It's the $731 million question. Who won the Powerball jackpot? But the big winner may never be revealed. Maryland is one of just seven states where winners can remain anonymous. Well, so it's an intense lottery debate. You know, some people want us to name all the winners because it's public trust. It, it makes sense to, to know that somebody's being paid the money. In our case, anonymity is, is the rule of the day. We like to allow people the comfortability to select how they come in and claim their prize. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk to the owner and employees at this store who sold the winning ticket as the multi-million dollar mystery deepens. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, Lona Coney, Maryland. Parler won't be hosted by Amazon's web services anytime soon. A federal judge denied the social media company's request for a court order that would force Amazon to host it again. Amazon kicked Parler off its cloud hosting service earlier this month. The company claimed Parler, which has many users associated with the far right, did not do enough to remove instances of incitement from its site. However, the new ruling does not end Parler's litigation against Amazon. At least six other data companies have refused to host Parler as well. Netflix is launching a new feature providing suggestions when you can't decide what to watch. The shuffle play option will display titles based on what you've watched recently. If you don't like what's offered, another button appears saying play something else. And the Biden administration has hidden a message on the White House website. It's actually in the coding of the site and it says, if you're reading this, we need your help building back better. It ends with a link to an office that aims to improve digital communications. So if you're interested in programming, you can land a job in the federal government, maybe even at the White House. And here's another sweet job offer. The Candy Fun House in Canada is looking for candyologist. That's a fancy title for someone willing to get paid for easy eating thousands of confectionery products. The position pays $30 per hour and is available for full or part-time work. And you can work remotely. You get that job, you can get a personal license plate that says Wonka. Yeah, that sounds like a great job, although a lot of calories. Yeah. <laughs> 625, 54 degrees. And President Joe Biden changing the federal government strategy to fight the coronavirus pandemic. We're going to find out what actions he is taking in hopes to get America back to normal as quickly as possible. It's been a monumental task. The San Antonio Food Bank still working to keep up with increased demand during the pandemic. We'll hear from the president and CEO on how they've been dealing with more and more families in crisis. And let's take a quick look out with TransGuide this morning. Looking around San Antonio, I-37 Pecan Valley looking okay for now. We're going to check in with Samuel later in the newscast. Hours after a deadly and fiery crash, crews are still on the scene working to pick up debris. We're live here, coming up. President Joe Biden has announced an ambitious agenda for how to get the pandemic under control. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The details coming up. Outside with live cam, uh, we're looking towards San Antonio International Airport. Some of you have seen some rain this morning. And uh, it's definitely made the roads wet in some spots. Just depends on where you're at. We're going to take a look at radar and check in with Samuel in a moment. But for now, happy Friday. It's January 22nd.
Let's go straight to Mike, get an update on our Friday and our weekend. We made it to the end of the week. Congratulations, Mike. Yes, indeed. And that bright and sunny banner, that's for later on this afternoon, because obviously things are uh, kind of murky out there. Lots of clouds, and you can see a few raindrops on the live cam down there from uh, Brook City Base looking up in toward downtown. 54 degrees. We've actually gone up just a couple of notches in the past hour, and the dew point has kind of followed uh, neck and neck with that. So relative humidity is quite high, and that's why we are seeing some uh, fog around the area and there's that one batch of rain as you can see it is continuing to work its way off to the basically northeastwardly. We still have some of these showers left over still uh, down around Pearsall, northern Atascosa County and of course uh, here in town mainly just some light showers. Some of the uh, the moderate rain has been down there on the south side and over toward uh, Elmendorf and continuing to move on out but of course streets are damp and then as far as visibility now everything is pretty decent. It's improved quite a bit. It was uh, down to about a half mile both New Braunfels and Kerrville earlier this morning. Rock Springs now it was zero just a couple of minutes ago and now it's back up to uh, 10 miles. Still some fog down here to the uh, the southeast. So uh, some fog, some sunshine or some fog and rain this morning, then sunshine, warm temperatures, mid 70s kind of spring like today. Mild to warm will be mid 60s tomorrow, mid 70s again on Sunday. A couple of showers in the afternoon tomorrow and then showers and even a few potentially stronger storms on Sunday and then next week start off mild and finally get back down toward normal readings as the week progresses. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King and uh, Trans Guide cameras kind of show exactly what's going on with the rain, right? Yeah, Mike, especially from 410 on the north side south uh, in Bear County. You can see 410 at uh, Perrin Vital there. You can see the traffic uh, flowing as at 1604 at uh, Culebra. Let's take a look at some travel times here coming in from the north on 281 from Bolverde. Uh, 28 minutes into downtown San Antonio, 21 minutes on 90 from Castroville. We had some problems yesterday, but not today. And 26 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels. And we've been talking all morning about this situation here at 1604 and 37 in Southern Bayer County. You can see a little bit of a delay. This kind of fluctuates there as they're cleaning up after a major uh, collision overnight. An 18 wheeler that is actually carrying molasses uh, crashed and also injured two people in a van. And our Stephen Cavazos, he's live at that scene this morning. And Stephen, uh, we've been following this throughout the morning. Morning. How is the cleanup and traffic out there now? Well, good morning. Now, crews have been working through the night and through some of this rain that's coming down again just right now, but they are trying to get this scene quickly cleared hours after that crash happened. Now, we are told this all happened sometime after 10 last night. San Antonio police say an 18 wheeler had been hauling molasses before it launched off the highway and onto this axis right now. This is on I-37 North and 1604 heading into San Antonio. Now that's where they say the 18 wheeler had hit a van before crashing into an embankment and then bursting in flames. Now, unfortunately, police say the driver of that 18 wheeler was burned beyond recognition and pronounced dead at the scene. Now, two other people were in the van. We're told that they were rushed to a nearby hospital and their injuries were minor. Now, the cause of the crash is still not known and the driver's identity has been released. But as you mentioned, Samuel, these crews have been out here throughout the night working to get this area cleared up so drivers can make their way into San Antonio, San Antonio safely. Well, we'll have more coming up. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police are investigating two robberies this morning and trying to figure out if they are connected. The first one happened in the 3100 block of Blanco Road. That's near Fresno Road on the north side. Police say two men walked into the JNA grocery store and robbed the clerk at gunpoint. The two men then got in a blue pickup truck and drove off. Police say this robbery happened around 1130 last night. Police say the second robbery happened about 15 minutes later at another convenience store about five minutes away. They say the two men walked into that store at the Sitco gas station on Gardena near Vance Jackson. Police say the two men also pulled out guns and pointed them at the clerk. They say the gunman also fired three shots into the wall before running off. Police say they are not sure if the two are connected, but they are looking into it because the two robberies happened so close to one another. This has been going on for months and months now. Families in and around our community dealing with unprecedented issues as a result of the ongoing pandemic. The economic impact has led to long lines at the San Antonio Food Bank, but the local nonprofit has answered the call, helping thousands of people in need. It's more than just food. Food is love. Food is tradition. It's culture. It's, it's this expression of, of comfort 
And, you know, I know that through the pandemic, just the ability to provide food gives peace. It gives hope. It, it gives connection. And I think that's what the food bank's all about. It's this connection to people. This morning on GMS 8 9, our Max Massey sits down with the president and CEO of the food bank, Eric Cooper, to talk about how he got here and what the last nearly year has been like for he and his organization. President Joe Biden has announced a national strategy for how to combat the coronavirus crisis. Yeah, it comes as the pandemic continues to take a devastating toll on American lives and the economy. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more. In his first days in office, President Joe Biden is overhauling the national response to the coronavirus pandemic. 400,000 Americans have died. That's more than have died in all of World War II. 400,000. And this is a wartime undertaking. Biden signed 10 executive actions Thursday, including using the Defense Production Act to order private companies to manufacture supplies like syringes, requiring international travelers to the U.S. to receive a negative COVID test and a mask mandate at airports and for interstate travel. We're in a national emergency. And it's time we treat it like one. Key to Biden's strategy is more funding for vaccine distribution, part of his proposed $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. The price tag of the proposal could be a tough sell in Congress. But Biden's Treasury Secretary nominee, Janet Yellen, says now is the time to act. The smartest thing we can do is act big. In the long run, I believe the benefits will far outweigh the costs especially if we care about helping people who have been struggling for a very long time. Biden is set to address the economic crisis in remarks today as COVID cases continue to spike, forcing businesses to close and lay off workers. The latest weekly jobs data shows 900,000 Americans filed first-time claims for unemployment benefits last week, and more than 15 million people are currently collecting some form of jobless aid. And President Biden is expected to sign more executive orders today, including one aiming to expand food assistance for school children. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Johnson & Johnson planning to have enough COVID-19 vaccines for 100 million Americans by April. A board member told CNBC that's the plan if the clinical trial works out. Right now, the company is conducting a large-scale trial to make sure the vaccine is safe and effective. Dr. Dr. Anthony Fauci says the company is close to seeking an emergency use authorization from the Food and Drug Administration. Unlike the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that are already available, Johnson & Johnson's vaccine is a single shot and does not need to be stored in cold temperatures. There is apparently a lot of uncertainty about the vaccine. The Kaiser Family Foundation report nearly 60% of Americans are not sure where or when to get a shot. Researchers say people feel frustrated, confused, and angry about the situation. These findings based on more than 1,500 people interviewed between January 11th and January 18th. And here at KSET, we want to make sure that if you have any questions about the COVID-19 vaccine, you get answers. You can submit a San Antonio question on our website, and we will look to clear up any confusion you may have. You can also check out the coronavirus tab on our website to see questions answered by local health professionals and find out who is eligible to get a vaccine. We also have our trust index stories to help you stay informed and fight off misinformation about a COVID-19 vaccine. Just head to KSET.com to see all the available resources. Sources. We got a chance to review some uh, viewer confusion yesterday. Some of the questions, a ton of misinformation or confusion out there, especially about that second, second dose, dose of a vaccine. Even yeah. from the people who already received the first Exactly. Dose yeah. So we're going to do our best to clear that up for you here in the coming days and weeks. Right now, 639, 54 degrees. It's important for parents to know what is going on in their teen's life. Just ahead, research on families, communication, and strategies to keep an open dialogue. Growing up, did you ever hide information or lie to your parents? <laughs> All the time, doesn't everyone? Did they snoop on me? I mean, not that I know of, but probably. Wendy Rote studied 174 pairs of moms and teens, including 111 pairs that also included dads. She wanted to know how much information kids willingly offer up and how parents get the other details they're looking for. Wrote and her team found five to seven percent of the families were what they called 
covert communicators. These were kids who were doing much more um, lying, and um, they also did some avoidance, some, some uh, only telling partial elements of it. Some parents in these families snooped to get their information, checking the teen's phones and computers. Covert communicators had the most depression and the most negative interactions with their parents. 12% of the mother teen pairs were indirect communicators, telling their parents some details and leaving some out and 82% were open communicators, meaning teens offered parents information without being asked and had the most positive parent-teen interactions. Roach says families can take incremental steps toward open communication. Set um, an open expectation with the teen that you know every week we're going to look through your phone history log um, so that it's at least not behind their back. Explain to your teen why it's important that you know where they are and who they're communicating with online. Ask them at least three questions every day. It helps establish a healthy pattern of communication. Erica, it's on this case at 12 News. Or you just sit down in an uncomfortable chair and put a spotlight on them. You know, the interrogation <laughs> continues. <laughs> hey, <laughs> That's probably how it feels. Yeah. Hey, if you're looking, uh, thinking about doing some home improvements or you need to get a repair done, it's important to start looking for a pro now rather than later. Angie Hicks, co-founders of, excuse me, co-founder of Angie's List, says establishing a trusted relationship with a professional can benefit you in the long run. So Hicks advises to not wait to find a pro until something goes wrong. Instead, find one in advance by planning ahead. That, that way, when something happens, you have a good, trusted relationship and will feel more comfortable if repairs were needed more often. Be sure you're getting three estimates and understand exactly what's going to be provided uh, so that you know exactly what you're going to get. And you may have heard this say this before 50 million times, but be sure to get everything in writing. Hicks says you can always refer back to what was done if something goes wrong. Make a paper trail. Well, it's a good reminder because there are still a lot of people who are like, hey, let's just Let's just, you know, agree over the phone. I'm like, no, right, right. no, let's not do that. Get it in writing, the fine print. 645, what's the latest on traffic, Samuel? Well, we have a couple of uh, stalled vehicles uh, reported now on 35. We have this one at uh, 35 in Eisenhower. We have one at 35 in Zarzamora. We still, of course, have the situation here at 604 and 37. Uh, that cleanup after that 18-wheeler crash, you can still see uh, some delays in the area. And, of course, as we saw, it's raining there, too, so that's something to watch out for some construction uh, later uh, today and throughout the weekend. This is overnight on six, uh, 281 between uh, TPC Parkway and 1604. Some alternating lane closures through the weekend. We also have this one in Gomal County uh, from Watson's Lane down to uh, Conrad's Lane. Southbound lane closures tonight and Monday night uh, through the following morning. And here's a look at Transkai 35 and Cesar Chavez. You can see uh, the rain there as at 410 and Perrin Bidel. So uh, slow down and, and, and while this rain is uh, moving through and add some extra time, guys. Uh, some lakes and rivers might be low here in South Texas, but up the road, it's not looking too bad, Mike Coaster Hayes. Yeah, and uh, we've had a few pictures from uh, Ron over there, the 360 bridge overlooking Austin and different vantage points. And just, I mean, I guess you could probably take a 360 panorama and see a different view all the time. So great shot. Thank you very much for that. All right. We are seeing rain there on live cam. This is from uh, Brook City Base looking up in toward uh, downtown. Obviously, there's the Tower of the Americas and the Alamo Dome just to kind of put it in perspective for you and uh, Frost Bank right over there. So we do have some of this light rain, but as you can see, it is starting to end in the western portion of Bear County, San Antonio. A couple of leftover sprinkles here and there, but this continues to work its way off to the east. So yeah, it is going to leave behind some wet roads, so travel is going to be a little slow going, but this will, uh, like I said, just continue to move on out. And as far as fog, we really don't have anything that's too thick out there. Maybe a little bit of leftover down here along the, uh, the coastal plain. So dew point temperatures remain fairly high, especially compared to the, the actual air temperature. So relative humidity is high and it's going to be staying kind of steady for the next roughly 24 hours. Then we get into late tomorrow night and, and Sunday, and that's when humidity is going to start to work its way back into the picture, and that's going to help out with some rain chances late tomorrow and then going into Sunday. And with that extra humidity around here, humidity, even though it seems like it's kind of heavy on you, it's actually lighter than dry air. And so that's why the atmosphere a lot of times becomes a lot more unstable with some other factors. And, and that then is why we're going to be seeing potentially some strong storms later in the day and uh, evening hours on Sunday. We clear out nicely today. 
and then tomorrow a lot of clouds. I don't even think we'll start off with that much, if any, sunshine, and we'll start to see some of the showers move on in here. This is kind of a computer model with broad brush, so it's not going to be everywhere, but just an indication that we see some of the rain trying to move in here uh, late tomorrow and then overnight into Sunday and then into uh, Sunday afternoon. Things are going to be clearing out Monday. Then we got a nice stretch of weather coming in here for the middle part of next week. And temperatures will finally make it back down toward normal readings because today way above normal. Yesterday we stayed right where we should in the low 60s, but today we get up into the uh, mid and even some upper 70s, low 80s around the area. Plenty of sunshine, a little bit of a reality check tomorrow, 67. Rain chances move in later on in the day and then Sunday back to the mid to upper 70s and temperatures slowly decline going into next week. So you know what's going to happen here, guys? Mother Nature is messing with us. She's given the spring like pattern through the month of January. <laughs> We're going to turn the page into February and then wham, it's going to be back to like some sort of shockingly low temperatures based on well, I experience. Think, yes, <laughs> I think Mother Nature is going to hold off on February and I think we're going to have a snowstorm in March. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a bold prediction. <laughs> no, I'm you heard it here first. Folks. I, I know <laughs> you're, I'm wrong. You're about to be either magnificently right or magnificently wrong. wrong. That's OK. Either way, <laughs> January 22nd will mark the date when she said that. So. Fair enough. Oh, <clears throat> 649 55 degrees. You're watching GMSA here in Texas. We know and love our rivers, which is why keeping them healthy and clean is very important. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll see a new study that outlines how the color of a river could indicate there's a problem. Outside with live cam, if you are tuning in just now, waking up with us here on GMSA, we have more to come. We're going to wrap things up and take another look at uh, our weather authority, uh, sorry, weather authority forecast and our traffic authority, Samuel King. He'll be back as well. A fiery crash ends with one driver's death and two others rushed to the hospital. Now this crash happened here off I-37 North Axis Road in 1604 after 10 last night. Now San Antonio police say that an 18 wheeler had been hauling molasses before it launched off the highway and onto the Axis Road. Now that's where it hit a van before crashing into an embankment and then bursting into flames. Now police say the driver of that 18 wheeler was burned beyond recognition and unfortunately was pronounced dead on the scene. Two People were in a van that were in the van that is were rushed to a nearby hospital. Their injuries were told are minor. Now the cause of the crash is still under investigation, but crews have been out here working to clear that scene throughout the night. Reporting here just south of San Antonio, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. In the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police are investigating two robberies this morning and trying to figure out if they're connected. The first one happened in the 3100 block of Blanco Road. That's near Fresno Road on the north side. Police say two men walked into the JNA grocery store and robbed the clerk at gunpoint. The two men then got in a blue pickup truck and drove off. Police say this robbery happened around 1130 last night. Say the second one happened about 15 minutes later at another convenience store only about five minutes away. They say two men walked into a store at a Sitco on Gardena near Vince Jackson. Police say the two men also pulled out guns and pointed them at the clerk. They say the gunman also fired three shots into a wall before running off. Police say they're not sure if the two are connected, but they are looking into it because the two robberies happened so close together. And let's take one last look at the roads with Samuel King. Uh, traffic is uh, picking up and we're getting uh, some new incidents here. We have uh, this new incident down there at 410 and Roosevelt. Get you some more on that during uh, GMA. And as Stephen mentioned, we still have the delays here at 1604 and 37, especially eastbound east of 37 there. And you can see some of the travel times, 27 minutes coming in uh, from New Braunfels on 35, 25 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie. And here's a look at Trans Guide. Some delays here at 410 and 151. We'll find out what's going on out there, Mike, but some rain in the area as well. Yeah, and uh, if it has stopped raining, roads are still wet in a lot of spots. We do still have a couple of uh, drops on the lens over there from uh, live cam on the south side. And as you can see, everything continues to work its way off off to the east fairly quickly. So we are getting rid of much of the rain in and around the metropolitan area. Still a few of these leftover showers, obviously. Uh, fog is not a huge deal right now. It was earlier. We're at 54 and then boy, we're going to see plenty of sunshine later on today. 76 for a high temperature. Nice and spring like out there. And don't forget, Mega Millions up to $970 million for its nice jackpot. Good luck. Buying a ticket? I think so. I think so. <laughs> Have a great Friday, guys. We'll see you back here at 9.